ITB in Scotland, in partnership with SPADAC and SBATC, develop and deliver skills tests on behalf of the construction industry. It's the final part of your apprenticeship and you need to pass this to become a qualified craftsperson and achieve your SVQ. Passing your skills test should not be too difficult. It's a way of proving that you're capable of doing your job and if you are, you should be able to pass the test. So here's what you need to know. You will sit your skills test within the last six months of your apprenticeship. There are test centres throughout the country, maybe even in your college, and both you and your employer will get plenty notice of where and when your test will take place. At college, you're assessed all the time on what you've learned and the skills test is just another assessment of your knowledge and hand skills. The only difference is this test has been designed by CITB, SBATC, SPADAC and employers. The test has various elements and all are things you have been trained and tested on before in your phase tests and other assessments in college. Skills tests are based on skills required to perform the sorts of tasks commonly used on sites. This proves to employers that you can work competently to commercially acceptable standards and at a reasonable speed. If you don't pass your skills test, you will struggle to find another job as a qualified craftsperson or even get onto a site. It's really important that you do as much as you can to prepare for your test. You should download the Test Candidate Guide from the CITB website to familiarise yourself with the content of the test. You also need to make sure you carefully read the joining instructions you've been sent. You should speak to your employer as soon as possible if you feel you need any refresher training so that on the day you are confident and have the ability to pass. Make sure you know where your test centre is and how long it will take to get there. If you don't live near a test centre, don't worry, CITB and your employer will help you sort this out. On the day of your test, timekeeping is really important. If you are late, you won't be allowed to start the test. You'll be asked to prove who you are at the test centre, so you'll need to take photo ID with you. You also need to take your tools to the test. You'll get a list of what's needed from CITB. Don't forget to bring and wear the right personal protective equipment. If you don't, you'll be refused permission to sit the test. Before you start, you'll get a detailed induction and you'll be given a test booklet containing a description of the test. It's important that you read the information for each task before starting. Each task has a description, drawing and a list of the standards and tolerances that must be met in order to pass each element. What it doesn't tell you is how to plan the work, so you have to arrange your own work program. Only after you have read these notes and feel confident in what you have planned should you attempt the task. On the day, you will be allocated a test area and a stock of materials you need. If you are unclear on any aspect of the test, please ask the invigilator for advice. That's what they're there for. For your painting and decorating skills test, you have 14 and a half hours over two days to complete the test and you must attempt all tasks in the test booklet within the allocated time. The test consists of the following four areas. Painting walls, ceilings and covings. On the ceiling and coving, you need to prepare the surface as standard trade practice, then apply one coat of emulsion using brush and roller. On two other walls, you will prepare the surfaces of the walls and then apply paint finishes using brush and roller. Painting interior trim, window and varnishing door. You need to prepare all the woodwork and then apply paint and varnish finishes.
cross-lining a wall. On one wall, you will have to strip the existing paper, prepare and make good the surface. Then cross-line the wall using lining paper, keeping the face of the lining paper free from paste and pencil marks. Papering a wall. On the chimney breast wall, you will have to strip the existing paper, prepare and make good the surface. Then hang vinyl paper with a straight match pattern. There are also test items focusing on the cleanliness of the surrounding areas, overall impression and health and safety. The assessment process. Once you're finished and left the test centre, your test is marked by an independent assessor appointed by SPADAC or SBATC. They use a marking schedule which contains the same standards and tolerances as the test booklet you were given. They then record whether you have met the required standards for each point. Your test result will be either a pass or fail. There is no grading system, but you will be given your score later in a letter. There's a national standard of testing in all test centres throughout Scotland, so it doesn't matter where you sit your test. It's the same test and test conditions for everyone. When assessing all the painted areas, the assessor will be checking for bits and nibs, run tiers, curtains and misses. They'll check that the cutting in is crisp, straight and neat, with no paint on adjoining surfaces. On the woodwork, you may also lose points if there are any visible brush marks or fat edge buildup. Checks and edges must be painted to the correct internal and external specification. On the ceiling, coving and painted wall, the assessor will also look for visible roller marks, orange peel or frothing. When you cut in by roller, check that it's crisp, straight and neat and within 20 millimetres of the edge. On the papered wall, the assessor checks all the points laid out in his marking schedule, including checking for pencil and paste marks, how the paper has been cut and matched, that the corners have been cut correctly and overlapped with no loose or dry lifting edges, and that the joints butt and have no obvious gap or overlap on any length, that there are no gaps exceeding two millimeters at the paper ends and around obstacles, and that the final finish shows adequate preparation of the surface. It's also important to remember that an allowance of two millimeters from dead plum should be given on any length. The cross-lined wall is assessed to the same standards and tolerances as the papered chimney breast wall. This isn't all they look at, but it gives you an idea of the assessment and the standards required. Finally, the assessor will look to see that these surrounding areas are free from any defacement, spots or damage as a result of the tasks which have been carried out, and that the overall impression meets with standard trade practice and the test specification. Remember that you need to always comply with health and safety whilst carrying out the task. The invigilator will monitor this during the test and advise the assessor. After the assessor has marked your test, the schedule is then sent electronically to CITB. CITB then check that your marks are within the pass limit agreed by the industry, and if they are, you pass. You and your employer will then receive a letter confirming this in the coming week. If you fail your skills test, your letter will explain in what areas you need further supervised experience on site and possibly further refresher training in college. An application form to arrange a resit will be sent out, but you can also download it from the CITB website. However, it's important that before booking a resit, you think about the areas you've failed in and why. If you think you need more experience or training, speak to your employer or apprenticeship officer to arrange this. If you have only failed in one particular element and passed the rest, in some occupations, you may get the opportunity to take a partial resit. This involves only resitting that section. Once you have passed your skills test, you still have to complete the time served element of your apprenticeship to be a fully qualified tradesperson. 
Your SPADAC or SBATC registration form shows the date in which you will complete your apprenticeship. By this time, you should have achieved your Professional Development Award, Core Skills and all other units of your SVQ. This combined with passing your skills test means you would then receive final certification for your SVQ Level 3 and Modern Apprenticeship. You'll be fully qualified to work on a site in any country in the world, help you get any future employment or even start your own business. Finally, good luck when it's time to take your skills test. If you need any further information on skills testing, please look at our website, citb.co.uk.